Explain yourself. The comment section screams. How can a more expensive scooter with worse specification and as many of you have pointed out, no suspension be better? You must have been paid off by Boosted to love their product. This week, we're going to have one more go at the Boosted Rev and I will attempt to explain why I still think it may be the best scooter on the market and why you should stop obsessing about its specification. Roll the intro. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I would love it if you subscribe and like the video. Now, I always enjoy spending long holiday weekends in the city since aside from the more touristy area, everywhere else tend to empty out. Look at all these empty spots and right in the middle of East Village. If you're from the area, then you know how rare of a commodity this is. By the way, every fiber of my being as a New Yorker demands that I take these spots somehow. Of course, I didn't spend the weekend just staring slack-jawed at an empty spot. I went hiking with Kelly upstate and ate a well-deserved burger. Shush, I said well-deserved. I went rollerblading with my friends. Boy, it's been years. And even saw a show at the Armory on Park Avenue and Kelly is still puzzled by the fact that there are no chairs at American shows. But what I haven't been doing is going on long rides on my Nightbots V10. And the reason for that is the thing I enjoy the most about my various implement of distractions is how they fit into my life, not really the other way around. Since Kelly does not ride any sort of personal electric vehicle, there's no way for me to go on any sorts of rides when I'm with her. And this is where I hope the Booster Rev will come in. Now, of course, everyone takes a slightly different approach. Oftentimes, I find that there's this almost fetishizing aspect to many hobbies with their equipment. For instance, let me tell you all about my Lindo kayak paddle, handmade in Scotland, carbon fiber throughout, beautifully contour, coupled with an innovative, expendable quick release system that allows the paddle to be disassemble into four easy to pack pieces while still remaining stiff and unyielding fully assembled. But where I have visited on my folding kayak, I have to explain that another time, and the stories of how I got to those places are far more interesting to me than the paddle, which I'm fond of more as a memento to my adventures. I guess what I'm saying is that I like to ride a scooter, not repairing them. The other problem is, almost none of the qualities I use to describe the paddle can be easily communicated through the web. And since we no longer have the option to physically compare products, thanks to the death of retail stores, specification oftentimes takes center stage, especially when it comes to technology since they are far more easily compared than abstract concepts like design or quality. Faster, larger, stronger equal better products, right? So, uh, I didn't quite feel like I had enough time with the Boosted Rev two weeks ago. And now that I'm actually thinking about uh, getting one, and yes, I have to pay full price just like everyone else, I figure it'd uh, be nice if I can get a little bit more time with it. And conveniently enough, Boost is hosting another demo session here in New York City, this time at Central Park. So, uh, with the weather being beautiful, perfect for riding, and once again, we're skipping uh, spring and going straight to summer, I figure uh, it's worthwhile for me to uh, stop by and say hi to the Boosted team. Now, if you're thinking about getting the Boosted Rev or any other electric scooter, there's an important distinction you have to recognize. Unlike, let's say, a traditional bicycle, similar to your iPhone, there is a limitation to their lifespan as defined by the charge cycles available for the built-in lithium-ion batteries. Basically, the number of times you can charge and discharge the battery before its performance 
significantly degrades. Generally, the more conservative the manufacturer, the longer the battery lasts, but conversely, the worse the performance look on paper. See where I'm going with this? This is why cheap Chinese scooters considered essentially disposable since they aren't really built to outlive the limitation of their battery cycle. They figure that, you know, after a year or two of usage, and once the scooter had reached the end of its battery life, you would just throw the whole thing away. Now, if that sounds short or perhaps even a little bit wasteful, consider the fact that the average lifespan of a bird scooter, according to a study conducted by Quarks, and I'm gonna include a link below, is all of 28 days. Now imagine if you had paid $600 for a scooter, and it dies on you after about four months. Is that much of a saving at all as compared to paying more for a higher quality scooter that will last you way longer than that? By the way, I'm going to plug the electric unicycle like the Nightbot Z10 I'm riding by saying that they generally last longer and have less problems mostly due to their inherent mechanical simplicity and larger battery packs, but harder to learn. I know, I know. Now prior boosted products were built with easily replaceable batteries and components, partly because there's a warranty so it is in the company's best interest for their product to be easily repairable. Um, I don't have the tools to take it apart, but right here there's like this little thing that comes up, there's a screw there, there's another one over here. Now this does add to the overall cost and engineering complexity for the boards, but it also means that it is a lot more likely that the boosted rev, if it is built similarly, and by all indication it would, will far outlive its cheaper competitors. This is the Xiaomi Mi Scooter the recipient of the 2017 Red Dot Award for design, so it is certifiably beautiful, right? But see, I have a problem with the design of the scooter. Xiaomi also happened to win the Sin Award with their Mi LED desk lamp the same year, and you can see the minimalist, some would say Apple influence style shared between the two products. Except one is made to sit on your desk, while the other is meant for the streets, or on an off-road trail and in the middle of downtown traffic on a Tuesday. That's right, outside as in out here. Their resemblance to one another is quite honestly baffling to me from a design perspective, because these are products that is meant to be used on a daily basis, you know, in the streets, in the rain, in rough conditions. It really made me question whether or not the designer of this product had even ridden a scooter him or herself ever before. The other disconnect is that of its past. It isn't hard to see the various design elements the boosted rev have taken from the original electric scooter, the GoPad ESR right here, and that resemblance isn't just superficial. It is there because the design of the scooter also serve a functional purpose. The framing stiffen the rides and reinforce its folding joints, often the weakest part of the scooter. It also protects the more delicate components, the battery and the management system, similar to the tubular space front on the Ducati Monster. Its sweeping curve lowers the deck height and the center of gravity which increase ride stability. Yes, it adds to the weight, but you'll appreciate the added sense of assurances when you're cruising next to a two-ton SUV that have you firmly in its blind spot. When you're buying an iPhone, you aren't just getting a thing. You're buying into an ecosystem. From the curated app store to the Genius Bar staffed by mustache-wielding hipsters. This is partly how Apple justify their premium price. But it is also crucial, I think, for new technology products like an electric scooter. The day will come when something goes wrong and you'll appreciate having your friendly voice on the other end of a support call. But Boosted have done way more than that. Aside from the product demo, here in New York City, we also have a Boosted ambassador. 
Tom. Wow. Yeah, ambassador. You're the ambassador. booster ambassador. <laughs> is, do you, aside from the ride, is, is there anything else you do? So like the group rides and then a demo event and then like trade shows and stuff. So trade shows is huge, like Comic Con uh -huh. and like uh, we were at Tech Day and like uh, NYC Nano Fair, like all these like weird tech shirt trade shows. Uh -huh. um, I go see for them too. By the way, I actually arrived too late for the demo, so I text Tom for help and he graciously offered to do a ride with me after work and this is why these footage are actually from Washington Square rather than Central Park. These things matter, and even though I don't own a boosted product, I can see the goodwill they have built over the years in the New York City Eastgate group. It's not just about the product and support. Boosted understand that for their market to grow, they need to help build a community of riders, who not only help support their product, but also more importantly, build a lifestyle around their love of personal electric vehicles. This was how Jack Burton, turned snowboarding from a toy for kids to a multi-billion dollar Olympic sport and how GoPro cemented its position as a de facto action cam and fostered a generation of extreme sports enthusiasts. Before you tell me why so-and-so scooter is better, let me ask you, what have Xiaomi, Dualtron, or filling your favorite scooter company here done for the Eastgate community, other than selling you a scooter? <laughs> Power slide. <laughs> Thank you for sticking it to the end, and I double pinky swear that next week we'll return to our regularly scheduled electric unicycle related videos. Anyhow, thank you very much and as always, love to know what you think, that's what the comment section below is for. And as always, I really greatly appreciate it if you will subscribe to my channel and like the video. Until the next one, thank you.